Hello, I'm Edward October. Over the years, I've narrated more ghost stories, horror shows, and creepypastas than I can count. And yet, the crimes discussed on our true crime podcast managed to scare the shit out of me. This program is not suitable for children or the faint of heart. If you are such a person, go ahead and switch off this podcast. Listen to something else. Are you still with us? Well, we've warned you. Hi, Jen. Hey, Cam. How are you? I'm pretty um, fantabulous, I guess, is a good well, word for I'm that. Well, I'm glad to hear Thank you. That. Thank you for caring about me. I love that. <laughs> I, I do. Love I care I so I much. So today's story, it's... Uh, oh, we're jumping right in. All right. Well, uh, how are you? Anything new? <laughs> okay, now back oh, to me. Oh, we're going to jump in. Yeah. There you go. It's an older case, but when I first ran into this, I was like, I have to do this because I just can't, just because of the title. So if you know the title, which y'all will when you're hearing this. So yeah, so that's all I'm going to say about that. You ready to go? Let's do it. So today's bizarre tale begins in Chelsea. You know, that's across the pond, by the way. In 1977, where we go to the home of Walter Travers Scott Elliott. Now, if it's a long name, you know it's fancy, right? And his 60-year-old wife, Dorothy. The couple was enjoying the riches of what they worked hard for all of their lives. And there were a lot of riches as they were pretty well off. Upper crust, if you will, Jen. Nice. Nice. Both Walter and Dorothy came from well-established families, and they lived in a penthouse apartment surrounded by expensive collectibles. The couple managed a small staff at the home. In November of 1977, they hired a man by the name of Roy Fontaine. Roy Fontaine Mm -hmm. presented himself just as you would imagine a butler would. He was refined, well-spoken, good-looking. He quickly made an impact on the Scott Elliots and gained their trust. They even let him sign checks for them and handled their finances. We know, nice. Yeah, we know that's not going to be good. No, not at all, but good for him. Unfortunately for the Scott Elliots, there was a lot about their new butler that they did not know. And sadly, they would pay dearly for it. Mr. Fontaine was not who he said he was. In fact, his real name was Archibald Thompson Hall. But that was only the beginning. The beginning of the end. Is that what you're saying? Yes. On June 17th, 1924, Archibald Thompson Hall was born in Glasgow, Scotland. His career of petty theft started in his early teens, around age 15. He would steal and help himself to donation cans. Oh. It doesn't get much slower than that. Red yeah, Cross. exactly. Red Cross ones oh. in particular. It was around this time that Hall met an older divorced neighbor and the two began a fling. The man Ooh. introduced Hall to all the finer, nicer things in life and gave him a true appreciation for it. I get that. And I have an appreciation for it and I haven't been shown the finer Thank things you. in life. Thank you. Me either. At age 17... He was caught trying to steal stolen jewelry. So guess what? Off to prison he goes. Now, not wanting to waste time, Hall, which I do respect this, decided to become a better person or, shall I say, a better thief. Tomato, tomato. Anyway, he started studying antiques, antiques, if you will. He also Mm -hmm. became very familiar with English society, i.e. high class. He even started taking elocution lessons, Jen. The, that we it? need. The rain falls on Hawk, the... Hawk, I hear the cannons <laughs> roar. Is I, it the king approaching? I always go yeah. to the... Uh, <laughs> the rain in Spain. The rain yeah. in the Spain. The Pygmalion. The pl- yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. Thompson would find himself enjoying his first prison sentence in 1941 for theft. You know what they say, prison often makes good thieves better. They learn Mm -hmm. tricks from other criminals, and this was the case with Hall. Once out of prison, he returned to his old ways of thieving. Once he had collected enough money to move to London, he was on to bigger things, like fulfilling his dream of becoming an actor. 
Oh. It was at this time that Archibald Hall changed his name to, kudos to him, I, I respect this, Roy Fontaine. He loved mm. movies and he got the idea from Joan Fontaine yep. in Hitchcock's Rebecca. It's so, classier than Archibald Hall. It, it is. And so for mm. here, here, henceforth, he will re- be referred to as Roy Fontaine. If I mess up, you know, it's still the same guy. Well, so uh, this whole thing Roy. is just on one guy. Yep. It was about this time that Fontaine would marry ever so briefly, which was kind of a shocker because guess what? He's openly bisexual. And I'm mm-hmm. guessing the wife didn't really know or didn't really like that little fact. So he would entertain a string of relationships with men, even bragging that he had a sexual affair with both Lord Boothby, Lord Boothby, mm-hmm. and playwright Terence Radigan. The gay London scene adored Fontaine with his good looks and accent. He was a staple at all the cool places and all the cool parties. Fontaine would continue to steal to get by, but he also found a new way to make money, and it just so happened that his new occupation allowed him more access to the finer things in life, such as jewelry, jewels, fine Mm. jewels. He would be a butler to the rich. He was doing great things, and being a butler, he was pretty good, but his theft skills needed some work. In 1964, he was caught yet again but this time he would have to serve a 10-year prison sentence. Well, he was supposed to, that is. He made a break for it and escaped prison. He was captured in 1966, and for his little field trip, he received another five years on top of his sentence. Sounds reasonable. So Fontaine was paroled in 1972, and shortly after his release, he met a woman by the name of Mary Coggle, and the two became an item. He returned, I know, he returned to work. Don't trust people. That's all I'm going to say about that. He (laughs) returned to work as a butler, and he got his life straightened out. And that's the end of the story. No, it's not. No, it's not. Just kidding. Oh, Mary. As 1973 was wrapping up, he would go back to prison, and he stayed there until 1977. Upon his release, he found work at the residence of Lady Margaret Hudson. I can't do my accent. I'm sorry because you're going to yell at me. Lady Margaret You can't do your accent. That's the problem. You can't do it. I know. It's awesome. I love it. I'm sorry. I do. So Lady Margaret Hudson was a very rich widow with Mary on his arm and a prestigious new butler position. Fontaine was doing exceedingly well. That is until his past came calling. And that past had a name which was David Wright. You see, mm-hmm. David and Roy were sellies back in the whole prison. But during their little stay in prison, they were also lovers, Jen. It a happens. A little bit more than friends. Low, low Can't lovers. be with the one you love, baby. Love the one you're yeah, with, right? right. Mm-hmm. So David Wright was offered a job as a handyman at the house, too. Fontaine had repeatedly told David that he was trying to, quote, go straight. So when Fontaine learned that David Wright had been stealing from Lady Hudson, Fontaine was furious. Wright had apparently been lifting the silverware, but also he stole a piece of jewelry. It was a ring from Lady Hudson. Now, days later, Wright's girlfriend showed up and she was wearing the ring. Fontaine, who is not happy. So he talked the girlfriend into giving back. The stolen ring, which, thank goodness, right? Right. Things took a turn late one night when Fontaine woke up in the middle of the night with a rifle pointed at him, courtesy of his drunk friend, right, who helped himself to the liquor cabinet. You know, he was stealing the jewelry, the silverware, and now he starts to steal the old liquor. Well, I mean, come on, in the scheme of things, the liquor is easiest. not so bad, right? But then he gets drunk and then he points a gun at uh, Fontaine in the sleep. Yeah, that's not cool. No. So Fontaine was able to talk him down and he got him back to bed. But Fontaine uh, 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 would get back at his friend the next day. And I'm not talking like put a rumor on the Internet about him. Mm -mm, No, much worse. Fontaine asked Wright, hey, you want to go rabbit hunting? And Wright agreed. No, 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 thank you. After Fontaine. Never go to a second location. (laughs) Never go to the second location. (laughs) Even if it's rabbit hunting. (laughs) Exactly. After Fontaine was sure that Wright had no bullets left in his rifle, so he took him out there, made him shoot at rabbits, right? Making right. sure to count the bullets. Fontaine then shot Wright in the head and killed him. He then dug a hole and put Wright's 
body inside on the lady's estate, on the estate of the property. I'm just going to put him here. We'll pretend like we don't know what happened to him. Mm -hmm. That's a big estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weeks later, the police contacted Lady Hudson and told her about Fontaine's past. He had a record and she fired him immediately. Lucky for her, she didn't know what happened to Wright or that he was buried on her property. Could you imagine? Mm -hmm. What? At this point, Fontaine decided to move back to London, and it was here he landed the butler position to 82-year-old Walter Travers Scott Elliott and his wife, Dorothy. The house was filled with priceless heirlooms and antiques, and Fontaine was delighted at what he saw. Did nobody do It's uh, a long time ago. You don't do check you, plus you like show background checks. You show up as a butler named Roy Fontaine, right? Uh, and I I don't know. So I don't I'm no, they did not. No, I guess you not. You would think, well, I worked with such and such, so you at least call and check on that. Especially if you're wealthy and elderly. You'd think, right? Know. All right, let's just chalk it up different time, I guess. Different times. So at this point, Roy Fontaine was happy. He thought, you know what? He again, he's trying to get his life straight. Uh, yeah, he he thought, he, yeah, exactly. He thought that this would be the final stop in his career. So he's going to go straight. He's going to, you know, ride off into the sunset as a butler to the rich. It's not going to happen, Jen. It's not happening. Just so you know. I know you're going to be shocked. Mm -hmm. While working in London, he meets a lady of the night by the name of Mary Coggle or who we started the story with, or her nickname, Belfast Mary, or Fast Mary. He was drinking in a pub, and she caught his eye as she was talking up a fellow by the name of Michael Quito. The three of them hit it off and became fast friends because they had a lot in common. Like, thick as thieves, Jen, because guess what? They were they all are thieves. thieves, and they were all, quote-unquote, going straight, but that didn't last too long. The three of them decided to make some of those fancy heirlooms their own. Oh, well, good. you know, mm -hmm. they're just going to borrow them and then they're going to sell them, get money for them. Nobody's going to notice. Oh, of course not. They're going to notice. At they, the start of December, yeah. Mrs. Scott Elliott needed to go to the nursing home for rehab. She had injured herself. She was going to be out of the house. And, um, you know, as we can suspect, this is not going to be a good thing for her. It was December 8th when Fontaine gave his new besties. Mary and Michael, a tour of the estate. Now they're nosing around, but they didn't realize that, guess what? Mrs. Scott Elliott had come home. She was released Ooh. early and she was in her bed, you know, because that's, she's recovering. When right. Fontaine opened the bedroom door with his new friends at tow, Mrs. Scott Elliott was sitting in her bed, wide awake and a bit upset, demanding to know, what the heck are you doing? In a rash decision, Fontaine and Kitto took a pillow and smothered her to death. What? Ooh. As the men were putting her back in... Now, check this out. Let me root. Let me... Backwards. As the men were putting her back into bed, Mr. Scott Elliott woke up. He's in the bed. He's in the bed with them, right? Her. <laughs> and wanted to know what the heck was going on. The duo explained, this was him and, and Michael, explained that Mrs. Scott Elliott had just had a nightmare and they were putting her back to bed and everything's fine. Just go back to sleep. Just go back to sleep, sir. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I can only assume is something the extremely wealthy do. The next day, Mr. Scott Elliott woke up and got ready for the day. He then went to the country club to meet friends for lunch. Now, mind you, Mrs. Scott Elliott is still in the bed. You know, dead. <laughs> right. So he didn't check on her. He just got up and got ready for the day. But maybe oh, she I'm was. I'm sure he was trying to be nice she, and let her sleep she's in. A, she's asleep. I'm sure then. their bed's probably, you know, a larger size bed. So they didn't. Yeah. Hey, Darren Wood just sent you the promo for uh, Bob, by the way. So okay. go check that. So the three masterminds need to come up with a plan while the mister is out of the house. Now, this is what they came up with. Can't make this up. The three masterminds need to come up with a plan while the mister is out of the house. Now, this is something that you just can't make up, and it reads like a bad Lifetime movie, and I love you, Lifetime, but here you go. They would keep Mr. Scott Elliott pumped full of pills. Mary, mm -hmm. you know, Belfast Mary, Fast Mary, right. would pretend to be his wife. Seems totally brilliant, right? So they're keeping him all drugged up, okay? on, on right. meds and then he's right. supposed to buy that mary is his wife 
Right. So they put the body of Mrs. Scott Elliott into the trunk of the car. Then Mary, dressed up in a wig and Mrs. Elliott's fancy fur coat, got into the backseat of the car with Mr. Scott Elliott. Uh, Who's doped up. Doped up, but believing this is his wife. So the two men are in the front and the group drive to a house that Fontaine had rented. As the group stayed the night in the house, the following day, Fontaine and Kitta would bury Mrs. Scott Elliott nearby at Loch Hearn. The pair then left for the estate home where they would steal everything not bolted down, all while Mary is back there at the other rental home posing as the wife with Mr. Scott Elliott. You'd think like at a point he might come to a little bit and think, you would think you're on drugs. But, I mean, and you're wearing and he's my eighty wife's coat. something. He's yeah. old. I don't know, but he could have been far fetched. But you never of, know. Yeah, exactly. Right. You d- I, we don't know his. We don't health know at the time when the men were finished. They had to go back and get the husband and the imposter wife. Not really sure what to do with him. On December fourteenth, Fontaine and Kiddo decided to kill him by strangling him. They thought it would be easy, but the old man mm-hmm. put up a good fight. Good for you, buddy. Good for him. They then used a spade to beat him to death and would Jesus. ultimately use that same spade to dig a shallow grave and place him in it. The following day, things went even further south, as they say. And here's where you can't, I guess this is where you say you can't really be friends with thieves and killers because you just never know how that's going to go. So good old Mary, Belfast Mary. She loved that fur coat. She had been mm. sporting it. She wanted to keep it. She had, She's grown accustomed to living in high she life. Did. Mm-hmm. She did. So Fontaine was adamant. You know, absolutely not. You got to get rid of that thing. Mary did not want to get rid of it. And so the two got in a big fight. Mm, more than a fight, really. Fontaine <laughs> hit Mary with a fire poker. And when she fell to the ground, he put a plastic bag over her face and suffocated her. Uh-huh. The two men then drove to Glasgow and dumped her body off a bridge into a creek. And then there were two. But would you really want to be friends with someone like that? You know, you're <laughs> always thinking, okay, who's who, who's going to out? You know what I mean? Like, who's going to be the last man standing? Last killer standing, I guess, would be more important at this point. With their newfound riches, Fontaine and Kiddo headed to Fontaine's family home to spend the Christmas holiday. Mm-hmm. Mm. Festive. It was, not, it was not quite the getaway they had expected. Gee, I wonder why. Fontaine's brother, named Donald, was not unlike his brother in that the two practiced thievery. But that was not all. He had also been arrested for child molestation, and that did oh. not sit well with Fontaine. When right. brother Donald started asking too many questions, well, you know what happens to those that get in the way of Fontaine, even, yeah. even though it's his brother. A bit later, Donald, he drowned in the bathtub. It was the strangest accident. Now, I'm not sure, but I think the fact that he was chloroformed and knocked unconscious Uh might have had a little bit to do with him drowning in the bathtub. And that's his own brother. Uh, Horrible. On January 15th, 1978, they went out looking for a place to dump Donald, but the winter ground made digging impossible. So they decided to pull over to the Blainhine House Hotel in North Berwick to wait out the night. When they arrived, the hotel owner watched Fontaine and and Kitto and thought they were acting strangely, so he called the police to ask the police to run the car tags. Funny enough, the hotel owner wasn't the only one that was suspicious of the pair. When the pair visited an antique store earlier, they tried to sell some of the goodies that they had stolen from the Scott Elliott's house. The antique dealer knew very well that the items that they were trying to sell were worth way more than they were asking for them. Yeah, that's a giant red flag. Right. The owner wrote down the car's plates and called police. The tags were registered to this Scott Elliott's. So police went to their estate to investigate to see if they're okay. Once inside the home, there were definite signs of trouble. Blood stained the walls, and the place was obviously missing many of the collectibles that once decorated the place. There was no sign of the residents, but it was clear that there was foul play.
Now, just a month earlier, when Fontaine and Kitto were enjoying the holidays, Mary Coggle's body was located on Christmas Day. Authorities knew that Mary had once worked for the Scott Elliots and wondered if the disappearances and her murder were con- connected. Because at this point, they just knew that the Scott Elliots were missing, right? They hadn't right. been murdered. It hasn't been figured out that they had been killed. Yep. Back at the hotel, after police ran the tags, they find out the plates did not belong to the car. They were stolen. I know it's a shocker. The police were sent out to the hotel for a little chat with the gentleman. Fontaine and Kitta were hauled into the police station to do some explaining. You know Get what on they the cops yeah. for being uh, quick. Yeah, right. Oh, so you know what they say, Jen. When you got to go, you got to go. So right when Fontaine arrived at the police station, he asked to use the restroom, and he mm-hmm. really had to go. As in out the window, out that window, and down <laughs> uh-huh. the street. Uh huh. He wouldn't get far as he was arrested, making his way out of town. Brother Donald's body was found in the trunk, and when they confronted Fontaine with the information as well as the authorities finding Mary Coggle's body, they were now aware that the disappearance of Mr. and Mrs. Scott Elliott was not quite a disappearance. And we all know the common denominator here. With that, Mm -hmm. Fontaine broke down and told them everything, even adding that he was responsible for David Wright's death. They had not even calculated that yet. So Fontaine, oh boy, had agreed to take detectives to Mr. Scott Elliott's body. They retrieved his body in a bush in the Highlands. Just days later, David Wright was dug up on the estate where he he was buried by Fontaine. Mrs. Scott Elliott was recovered 100 miles from where her husband was found. Roy Fontaine was convicted of four murders in London and Edinburgh, respectfully. He was sentenced to life in prison. Kitta was convicted of three murders and given 15 years for his involvement. I guess it's here where I need to mention Michael Kitto should really consider himself lucky to be so exactly prison time. Because you know why? Could have been dead quickly. Detectives found evidence that Fontaine had been planning to kill him as mm-hmm. well. He gets out. Not shocked time. by that at all. Mm-hmm. Now, Fontaine had uh, attempted suicide several times, but had never been successful. The Observer newspaper published a letter from Fontaine in 1995 in w- which he requested the right to die. Um, in 1999, Fontaine released his autobiography, A Perfect Gentleman. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay. Is he? I don't think yeah, so. No. In 2002, at the age of 78 years old, Fontaine died of a stroke in Kingston Prison. Now, there was a failed attempt to make uh, Fontaine's life into a movie that would star Malcolm McDowell playing the lead role. Oh, I've always liked Malcolm McDowell. I did too. And you know what? Mm-hmm. Just a little side note. Malcolm McDowell is one of, if not the, uh, showing his naked body on camera the most in Britain ever. So there you go. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. But nice. But I do like him, too. So that is the story of Archibald Thompson Hall, a.k.a. Roy Fontaine. <laughs> Interesting gentleman, to say the least. To say the least. So the whole reason I did this episode, and mm-hmm. you'll appreciate it, because I really wanted to say... <laughs> The butler did it. Ah, <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> he did a lot of it. He did a lot of it. He was terrible. Did a lot of it. But then also, like, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Like, there's his book. Somebody else wrote a book. There's a lot out there. But I condensed it down, and it's an older case. So murder's never funny, but sometimes murderers are, as we've said on the podcast. And he is, uh, yeah, I don't even He's know. a character. Character. There you go. That's it. Oh, insane insane you've oh. been watching anything good on tv because we this was a little bit shorter episode so we got to chat a little bit i have but i've been doing going back and watching comforting old shows you know what i mean yeah. and that started because of uh Poker Face, it's on Peacock, poker, poker and then face. once Poker Face ended, I was like kind of clinging, I was watching the episode, and it ended, and one of my big shows that I used to love, I still do, popped up, and it was Monk with Tony Shalhoub, oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely you love like Tony Shalhoub, yep. so I started watching, the. I watched the first season of that, and then Psych came up, which I loved Psych, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I've been watching that a little bit, mm-hmm. 
And another thing I've been watching was When You Walked In The Air Went Out. That one? True Blood. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Love mm-hmm. True Blood. I'm on the fourth mm-hmm. season. And it's so weird because I catch up things remember. you didn't catch earlier. I don't remember the fourth season. Like oh. my husband and I are watching it together and this like whole thing came on and I'm like, I don't remember this happening. Oh. I don't remember what happened. I mean, oh. our kids were at little. the age where maybe we weren't, they were little, but they were at the age where maybe we were yeah, not watching it as attention. often. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I would say. Too. So it's kind of like watching it all for brand new. Mm-hmm. But then I got sad because I remembered that Lafayette actually passed away in real life. He did? And Lafayette, yes, Lafayette's one of my favorite characters in that I show. I remember that. When did he pass away? Yeah. Aww. You know, I, drugs, I, like I believe. Drugs? Um, yeah. Like, he suffered from an addiction. Oh, man. Drug addiction. Hold on. Let me, I have to look this up real quick. I hate that. I forgot his real name. I want to say it was like 2019. Oh, not that long ago. Dang it. I hate that. I hate hearing that. Nelson Ellis was his name. Mm. And yeah, and he passed away. Like I said, and I had totally forgotten about it. But yeah, 2017, July 8th, 2017 is when he passed. Mm-hmm. I always and think he's about like my favorite. Yeah, the people that we've lost to drug addiction and things like that and how, I don't know, like things would change, you know? Mm-hmm. Not change, but like the difference they could have made in the world. That makes me so yeah. sad. His family released a statement in July of 2017 saying that Nelson had been trying to quit alcohol in the days before his death and suggested that he suffered from alcohol withdrawal syndrome leading to his heart failure. So it wasn't drugs. It was alcohol. My bad. Oh. But oh, yeah, that's terrible. Horrible. Sorry, Lafayette. I loved him. He did a gay. He was Louisiana and Oh my God, the best. He was the cutest. He was straight too, but um, I know. I love it. I absolutely. Love it. He was my favorite character, but yeah, that made me sad. But anyway, that's what I've been watching. Just kind of like old comfy favorites. Yep. It's like COVID stuff. I, I watched good. I watched stuff like of. that during COVID because I needed to yeah. feel. Just kind you know, of yeah. my head hasn't been in the game for anything new. Mm-hmm. Really? Except yep. I did finish The Last of Us. It was the season finale was last night. Mm-hmm. And it's really good mm-hmm. and um, can't wait for the second season. It mm-hmm. should be having more of those critters that are the scary so ones. it's going to come back <laughs> is what you're saying. Yeah, it's going to be more action packed. Yeah. Like I think the first season was more emotional yeah. character development type stuff. Second season's going to come back and be more scary mm-hmm. with the creepy things. That's what I heard. So I don't know. So what about you? My suggestion is to watch Luther. The Fallen Son. Oh, I love Luther. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have the biggest crush on him. I love him. I Ugh, would, how I would can marry you not? him tomorrow. Idris. So it's pretty good. It's um, it's long. It's good. And the way they left it is, I think maybe there'll be some more. We'll see. We'll see. So I like. You think that. It, it, Idris is coming back for another Luther? Mm, you're thinking maybe. I mean, this is a maybe one one time movie, but it's it's long. It's like two hours and two minutes or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was good. And then also, this is my guilty. <laughs> all of my stuff is a guilty pleasure but Outlast on Netflix <laughs> oh, I started watching this yesterday and I'm addicted so it's a series of teams that go out to Alaska but it's unlike survivor shows because they're mean to each other <laughs> Okay. And so they go and I was like oh my god they're so mean so they will go and like so for instance if you're on team Alpha and I'm on team Delta you see my team go out to go fishing or get food or whatever your team comes over and they steal sleeping bags and food and shelter. Like you steal it. It's me. Uh, okay. So yeah, but it's so uh, it's a survivalist yeah, it's kind a of survivor. But usually, thing. okay, yeah. So um, I'm watching that and I'm like, God, people are ruthless. But I think that's more like what people really are in real life, right? And did you say they were teenagers? No, 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 no teams, teams. So oh, there's teams, T E A M. Yes. Okay. So I teams. thought you said teams. Yeah, no teams. Uh, okay. So you have four people on your team. And so it's like Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Right. And then they fall apart. So now I'm down. I only have like an episode and a half left, and they're down to two teams. And I don't want to give anything away. But I was just like, oh my God, people are so mean. Because it's like, why, why can't you outlast, outwit, and outplay? And they're like, mm. and be nice. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, what? Yeah. Cut them at the knees. So that's kind well, of interesting. Well, I guess if you're if you have 
to survive, you've got to do what you have to survive. Like, I do, but it's like you 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 still have to go home. Apocalyptic. Yeah, you thing. still have to go home. And that's live, a game. Live with yourself, though. You know what I mean? Like that to me, that's playing dirty. I don't know. It's like you. Well, if it's a game on TV, yeah. yeah but if you're but like it's still having to dirty, you know, what I survive, mean? survive. But you've you're stealing do somebody's you rations and their sleeping bag. It's Alaska, right? Like it's cold. So is that but really you winning? Have if you to remember. Do that? But you have to remember too that they're not going to freeze to death because they're on TV. They're, the cameraman's going to give them a blanket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Well, or they they flare out. They have to send their flare. So that's yeah. Let me think about. Well, and you know, I don't have much to say, Jen, but I do have to say my cable went out all day yesterday and most mm-hmm. of today. I know. I was that's so you. productive yesterday. I really for, you. for about two seconds. I thought I think I'm going to get rid of the internet or no. I I did. <laughs> Because I was like, mm-hmm. the house is clean, laundry's done, made dinner, was glorious. And then I think, wow. Camille, stop it. What are you thinking? And then you I couldn't snapped, live without I, your TV. No, I couldn't. I snapped, snapped back to reality. But it was weird because, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. And you oh. watched the Oscars last night? I did. My, my coworker, Haley, shout out to you if you listen. We went through the outfits because we're like, let's go through. We had not, we had conf- we have conference together, and so we're like, mm-hmm. okay, yes, no, yes. And I did pick a couple dresses that I t- did not like, and they were on the best best dressed. Yeah, so, like Who, Michelle Williams. I didn't like that outfit for her. I'm sorry, I just didn't. I thought it was and a, a lot of white. I don't know. It was just like yeah, and then a couple outfits that to me the Oscars are the epitome of glamour and like refinement or it was right it was Mm -hmm. and so i was like that is a cute dress but that is the grammys that is spicy that should not be here that's what i was thinking so um so yeah um my two dresses i hated the most and i'm just gonna say it right now i'm gonna say it right now Mm -hmm. florence pew what what yeah i saw that i didn't quite like it so it was rumpled and kind of no it's your duvet she's wearing a duvet exactly high-waisted black shorts with pockets right she was all rumpled and she looks like she was carrying sheets is what i thought and allison Mm -hmm. williams what is that on the back of that thing what is that thing it was like hey so the the, today when we were doing this i kept saying Haley, i have an idea as your stylist okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you this really glamorous pink dress and then we're gonna pretend that it has a coat like a jacket on it but mm-hmm. only you're gonna let it fall to your elbows and Shrug. you're never gonna pull it up right you're never gonna pull it up. and so it's just gonna drag behind you like like a third limb or something it was it, right I giving you limited it. arm mobility yeah, it was terrible mm-hmm. terrible so yep. yeah so there you go but yeah I, you well, know, I love that stuff. So, because I'm a nerd, but yeah, and, it's, uh, I had no, uh, nothing in the game this year. So I didn't watch any of it, to be quite honest. I mean, I followed some of it on Twitter, but I was making sure that everybody, you know, I, and I knew every, everything all the time or every, yeah, wh- what is it? Yeah. That, I knew that was going to sweep. I did too. I knew it just yeah. because of the concept and the right. Academy voters like that. So I knew that exactly. for sure. Exactly. Like I had other movies that I would have preferred to win, but I knew that 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 it doesn't have that all encompassing love from people, you know. Exactly. So mm-hmm. yeah. So that was yep, fun. I, yep. That's what I heard. I didn't watch it. I was watching The Last of Us. Yeah. See, I'm not even so, started that. I don't even know if I want to, but I do like Pascal. So we'll see. Oh, he's we'll good. See. We'll see. He's so good in it too. Mm-hmm. Oh, another thing that I have been watching, and you're going to be shocked, the 10th Doctor with Doctor Who. I went on to redo shocked, the uh, season with shocked. Donna. Seriously, it's only the second time I've gone through it to watch it. So this to is be quite, the second? Maybe third. The, maybe, maybe third. third maybe no, fourth. No, no, no. We don't know. I'll go by and watch like my favorite episodes, but never like the whole season. And Donna is my favorite <laughs> companion. So I just thought. Which one's Donna? All, What's she look like? She's Catherine Tate with the redhead. She's oh, the redhead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I like them because they don't have like a romantic They're just partners. thing going. Mm-hmm. Like the mm-hmm. first one, the first companion with the 10th Doctor was Rose and they had this like unsung just love. Just gets a complicated And then the second band. one, the companion was in love with the Doctor, but he wasn't in love with her. So like with Donna, mm-hmm. they were just like friends. They were buddies. Yeah. And I liked that the yeah. best. Works and plus she's home. funny. Yeah. Donna's funny. She's the best companion, in my opinion. But uh, I but you. yeah, I haven't watched anything new, really. Just finished out Poker Face. P- I think P- that Poker season. Face. 
season finale was there too, yep. right? Yep. Wasn't that the season finale? Yes, it was because you you saw what happened at the end there. We're not going to give it away. I but, did. Yep, it's good. Yep. But yeah, but did you, any other movies? Oh, I did go to the movies and see Cocaine Bear. What'd you think? <laughs> Loved it just because it was so over the um, top, over the top mm-hmm. and campy mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, it was great. And Ray Liotta's last movie. Oh, that makes me sad. Which yeah. made me, and I totally forgot it. And so when he popped on scene, it gave Aww. me like a little brief second of joy with kind of the, oh, yeah. Aww. So I liked him. We did go see Adam Sandler. He came into concert. So my husband and I took Huge. the girls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We They loved it. But that's the only thing exciting here. I haven't. That's it. Life's pretty boring. No. Which is okay. Boring is good. That's it. Our age, <laughs> that's, that's what you okay. want. Uh, you want more. Exactly. Well, Jen, that sounds exciting. And uh, as exciting as it gets. It is. Hey, I'll take it. You know, we're here. We're still here. I mean, <laughs> and so until next week, remember lock your doors and keep passing by those open windows. Uh, bye bye. Love ya. Today's episode was researched and written by me, Cam. For more information about this episode, as well as all the sources I used, please check out our show notes or the podcast website at ourtruecrimepodcast.com. Our True Crime Podcast is developed and created by hosts Jen and Cam. Original music and audio mix of all our True Crime Podcast episodes is courtesy of Nico Vertese from We Talk of Dreams. Listener discretion is provided by Edward October from October Pod VHS. Our True Crime Podcast is executive produced by Nico Vertese and Dick Bain. Make sure to like and subscribe to Our True Crime Podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. We can be reached on Instagram and Facebook at Our True Crime Podcast or on Twitter at Our True Crime Pod. You can email us at Our True Crime Podcast at gmail.com. If you really like the show, make sure to check out our Patreon at Our True Crime Podcast. Our True Crime Podcast is an OTC production.